So when my son was born a year ago, he got a bunch of these toys made by Obal that are designed to kind of help kids learn how to grab onto things. Here's uh, one that he got. You can see in the zoom in there, it's got these different size circles arranged in a uh, roughly hexagonal pattern. Um, but the idea is that it helps the kid uh, learn how to, uh, you know, grab onto things, you know, lift things up, uh, use their fingers, but also teaches some colors, right? It's got these four colors. And as I was looking at this toy one day while playing with him, I realized that this thing has basically a sphere divided into four uh, equal regions. So the red region, the yellow region, the green region, the blue region are all the same size and shape, which on this grid means they've all got an equal number and identical arrangement of big circles and small circles. And I thought that was kind of neat. It's kind of neat how you can kind of you know, you could cut along this seam and you'd get out, you know, identical shapes there. But that got me thinking, you know, this is basically an approximation of a sphere. And I began to wonder, what would it look like if you took a sphere and divided it into four identical regions like this? Now, it's not dividing it into, uh, into two hemispheres like we have on our globe. We have a northern hemisphere, a southern hemisphere, an eastern hemisphere, a western hemisphere. It's not cutting it up in quarters like that. Because if you look at the seam along here... The seam between the yellow and the blue goes up and to the right like this, but then the seam between the red and the green goes perpendicular to that along here. So it's not like you've taken it and just gone slice one way, slice another way. It's actually a little bit more nuanced than that. It's almost like you, you took this thing and mapped it onto a tetrahedron and you said, here's one corner of the tetrahedron, here's another corner of the tetrahedron, here's another corner, here's another corner. And you basically uh, created the, the sections based on which corner of the tetrahedron they were closest to. And I got to thinking about this problem and realized, of course, I can model this in GlowScript. Uh, let me put this on full screen for us. So here what we've got is a code that takes uh, a set of points here. These are going to be called atoms in the code. And it identifies them or it groups them based on which corner of the tetrahedron they are closest to. And then it organizes them by color, red, green, white and blue. And so the way I've set this up, first I create the list of uh, atoms that uh, will make up this spherical surface. If this looks familiar, you might have seen this on a previous video about moment of inertia. And so we take these atoms, we add them to this list called atoms, and then we set up the four points of a tetrahedron over here. So these are the, the four points of a tetrahedron. Um, set up on this sphere. So one's at one, one, one. The other corner's at uh, negative one, negative one, one. The other one's at negative one, one, and negative one. The other one's at one, negative one, negative one. So that's four uh, points spaced out equally in space. It's the, it's the only way you can do that is the tetrahedron. And so each of those is forming a different location on the sphere somewhere. That's why we have this uh, square root of one third out in front so that they'll fit onto a sphere of radius one up here. And so then what we do, we just loop over each of the atoms and determine which point on the tetrahedron they're closest to. So for example, we start out with point one. You might as well just start with one of them. And we check for whether it's closer to point two. If it's closer to point two, then we say that point two is the closest. And then we check for point three. If point three is closer, then we say that the closest point is point three. Same thing with point four down here. And basically what we do at the end of each of these we change the atom's color to match that of the point that we're looking at. So to, to represent the four points of the tetrahedron, I've got uh, four spheres here. I've set those to be invisible because they don't really necessarily add anything to the animation, but you could, you could change these falses and trues and see where those central points are located. And then in order to be able to see it, I've got it rotating here with the uh, rotate command here inside of an animation loop. Because this thing does take up quite a bit of processing power. I don't know if you can hear my computer uh, whirring away in the background, but basically having all of these dots out there does create a significant demand on the processor. And so I've got it animating uh, by uh, automatically so I don't have to click and drag inside of it. And you can see it creates kind of the same shape we have on the O-ball. We've got the dividing line going one way and then the next dividing line on the other side going the opposite direction. And so as you look at this thing, you can see that each of the four colored regions is identical. The blue, the red, the green, and the white are all identical to each other. They've got the same size, the same shape, the same number of atoms contained. 
but it's not divided up into hemispheres like uh, like we divide our planet up into. And so I thought this was kind of neat. I'd never seen this done with a sphere before. Um, I thought it was I thought it was kind of interesting. I don't I don't know if these different sections have a name to them. If they got a specific name in geometry, let me know in the description below. Um, anyway, I thought this was neat. Uh, you can play around with this if you want. You can try adding in more atoms. Of course, it'll it'll take a longer time to run. But I think I'll just let this animation run for a little bit in fast motion so you can get an idea of what this thing looks like. One of the things I think is interesting, though, is that the intersection of each of these three regions, or four regions, you only ever get three of them at a time. You know, so you've got the white, the blue, and the green. You've got, on the other side, you've got the white, the blue, and the red meeting together, but you never have all four meeting at the same time, but they're not directly opposite each other. Like every region touches the other regions. It's just, it, geometrically, it's a really interesting thing to look at. So anyway, I thought that was a neat visual to look at. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you enjoy the, the code in the, uh, in the link in the description below. And of course, happy birthday to my son. Hope you get to enjoy this video someday, buddy.